Hi, so today I'm going to be doing another postcard watercolor process painting video. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist in The Simpsons Television Show. I've been working on the show for over 25 years now, and I'm here to empower you. I just wanted to... Uh... Okay, so uh, this time around, what I wanted to do was explain a little bit of the process before the process. So one of the th things that I often don't talk about when I'm doing... Uh, these painting process videos is talk about the actual drawing that I'm painting on top of. So really quickly, I want to introduce the idea that I that I first drew in order to paint and why I drew what I drew and how I drew it and and and, and the process that the drawing process so that it's it, it it simplifies the painting process. Okay, so here's here is the drawing. It's a scan of the drawing here, obviously. And um, so you're going to see that uh, what I've done here is I've kind of just really drawn only the things in the light. And anything in the dark is is just kind of a big, blobby, shapeless... Thing. Like I, I'm only drawing what's in the light and then leaving the rest in the dark, the, the darkness. Um, one of the one of the things, if you really want to know exactly the process or what I'm thinking or how I'm thinking it, this is something that I do whenever I do any kind of portrait uh, figure drawing. So like, for example, if I'm practicing portraits using figure drawing and five minute figure drawings, two minute figure drawings, that sort of thing. Uh, this is how I approach the head. Uh, I, I break up the head into planes. I break up the head into light and dark shapes and masses. And that's how I approach it. If you want to see that in action, if you want to see me practicing portraits, uh, there are a few videos. I'm going to link to them in the description of this video on me practicing those things. Five minute head drawings, that sort of thing. Uh, you'll see me doing it in practice. Uh, so I practice that in figure drawing. I get used to doing and thinking that way. And then when I am going to do a painting, I approach the head in the exact same way and I break things up. And that, it isn't to say that I'm not thinking solid graphic and anatomy, construction, all that stuff. It's, it's all in there. I have it very subtly put in there. You can see that I'm thinking about that stuff. Um, it, you have to. It, it's impossible to like just draw this just graphically. Um, so uh, without knowing what you are abstracting, right? Without knowing what you're simplifying, without knowing why the shadows fall the way they should fall. You have to know your head structure. You have to know your head anatomy. Um, so, and then I make desi design decisions at this point in the process so that when I paint, it's not, I, I tend to say it's like paint by numbers, but it isn't because um, it, you, 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 you're able to cover all of this area with the paint, right? But you still need to decide what is a soft shadow, what is a firm uh, edge? Uh, what is a hard edge? Um, what needs to be darker? What needs to be lighter? What needs to be a mid-tone? What not to paint? Where to put the paint? How not to... So, so you're, you're avoiding the muddiness. You're, you're trying to increase the contrast while still adding finesse and, 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 and edges and, and things like that in it. And, and, and adding... Um, just the right val the right types of value. Now, that isn't to say that even if you kind of do a little bit of a sloppy job, it still doesn't look fine. Um, but uh, what you want, don't want to do is mess it up by oh by 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 making wrong choices even at that uh, uh, at the painting stage. So, uh, just thought I'd just talk about the 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 setup before the actual painting and what I'm thinking when I'm approaching this. Okay, so uh, now to the painting part. All right, so this time around I'm going to uh, do this in 
Oh, green. Uh, I, I actually have decided to do this in green um, because of the, uh, the, the technical cyberpunky kind of thing that I'm going with. So I'm, I'm mixing up my blue. So I'm going to take blue and I'm going to really mix my my French blue uh, with some green that I've got here and um, I'm just gonna start putting it all in with a with a flat brush And I'm going to be very sloppy and loose with it. And uh, the idea here is to just do all the all the blacks as if I'm just doing a um, an ink drawing. And and all of these paintings on these postcards that I'm doing. I tend to tend to approach as if it's an ink drawing. Uh, that's what I'm used to. So that's what I do. And 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 uh, I'm using this flat brush because it it takes it, it's fast. It just takes up a lot of it'll it, it'll be faster this way. Um, but I am going to go back to my round brush when I'm getting close to some edges here that I need to get to as I get closer to to the um, the actual figure. And believe it or not, I am out of the color I just mixed. I'm going to have to go back in again. That was very, very fast. It... I'm going to have to mix it up again. It wasn't nearly enough. Now, will I get the same consistency? Um, I don't know. I mean, the same color. I don't think I will. And that's okay. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sweat it. All right. I'm going to switch brushes, so I'm going to wash this out. Now I'm going to go back to this. So this, this brush, uh, I was asked what kind of brush this is. This is just a water brush. Um, what you do with both the the flat brush that I had and this one um, you fill it up with water it, 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 so you've got this this brush up here um, you fill it up with water you could squeeze the water through and this is a um, this is a five like a like a like a fiber brush here um, and you squeeze the water and it goes through. But you, what I actually am doing, believe it or not, is I am dipping this in water. Uh, it saves it saves me from having to squeeze the water out, and it's just faster. Both the flat brush and this water brush are are synthetic. And uh, they're both um, water brushes. So I'm being a little bit more careful now. I'm just... basically inking now right in here I 
I mapped out where the light areas were and where the dark areas are and it's at this point kind of paint by numbers all the real work happened in the drawing in the drawing stage I had I have it all planned out and it's all execution from this point on uh, the 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 trickiest part is making sure that uh, I don't go over my lines leaving the white area where it needs to be white and I already messed up so I lost some white already we'll see how that works out later if I could bring it back if I even should So I'm being sloppy on this side, but the problem is that once I cover this all with with the first layer of valley, I'm going to have to go out over it all again, and that may mess everything up. Because I can... I can be even sloppier accidentally and mess it all up. I think perhaps I was being too sloppy. So I don't want all these kind of streaky th bits. I want it to be just kind of one continuous value. Which means that I'm, I will have to do another layer. Okay. Now it's time to to add a, a darker value on everything. So there's a few things I can do. I could darken this up even more. Right now it's like this is about as dark as I can get. So I'm going to put a little bit more blue in here and a little bit more still. That's a little better. And that dark ended up a lot without taking away the color that I really want. Now I may decide that I don't want the color anymore. And if I decide that, I'm going to add a little bit of red in here I 
I want to let this blend in. I want this to be a little bit lighter over here. And I definitely want this to be darker over here. I want this area here to be darker. area here darker and the eyebrows darker I want the lashes to be darker Now I'm going to go back in with ink later to sharpen these edges. Um, thing about watercolor and is that uh, it. Uh, doesn't always give me a sharp edge especially if I'm rushing through it and everything is still a little wet So not everything that is dark is the same value of dark, so I'm keeping some areas a little bit darker. While I'm keeping some areas a little bit lighter in the dark area in the dark. in the areas that are meant to be dark. And I may go back in and soften some stuff. And in general, now I'm adding just straight up blue in some areas.
it's tricky this stuff how oh, dark is dark um, so far I haven't really mixed any um, reds or browns to make this blackish I'm not I, I, I'm, I'm uh, deciding whether or not I need to I'm gonna I'm gonna layer all of this as dark as I can without adding any brown and see what happens may not be enough but it may may be enough I don't know It's all about layering all this stuff. mixing more green in here it's getting a little too blue and it's uneven for sure like the the, the colors it's not all completely green it's not all completely blue throughout it's just patches of blue and green everywhere and um and i think that's just adds more interest as long as the valleys are the same um the hodgepodge of different hues it just adds interest It's not dark enough now over here. It's all lightened up way too much and I need this to be really dark. I'm almost done with this side. I've got a eyelash in here. Boink. Got to get rid of that. OK, 
Okay, so I am thinking that I may need to f um, add a little bit of um, of brown in here. So what I usually tend to do is I tend to um, mix the colors on the canvas, like on the ca on the paper. I tend to just go straight in with the with the brown. I'm gonna try something crazy. I'm gonna mix my my colors on the <gasps> palette. I'm gonna see what happens if I just take the brown and add it to my palette and mix it all up there. But before I do, I'm going to water down some of this stuff. I'm going to add a, a um, I'm going to add a uh, mid-tone in here. Going to add another mid-tone here. Here. A little bit of one right here. So I'm just adding just a little bit of mid-tones in different areas. That's actually helping a lot. That's not so stark. Just gotta soften and low. Make sure these are soft light, soft um, uh, trans soft edges here. And I think I overdid it, and I messed it up. So I gotta wipe it off completely I guess see if I can't just add it back in I think that's that'll do it a little more subtly Oh, mid-tone up here too. There's, um, this is just too light. And it really shouldn't be. Okay, um, maybe I don't need to, to add the, um, the brown. Maybe I'm good. Maybe I should just keep it as green as a blue green as it can be. Like a big mishmash of blue green. Yeah, I think it's I think I should just leave it like that.
think what it, I think uh, I'll maybe I'll make my decision once I put in the line work. So I'll start doing the line work now. And the line work will be done with. Here, let me wet some of this stuff. There's some. There's just some transitions I want to make soft here. Um, I'm going to use a crow quill, and uh, I got to decide what ink. And I think I have the right ink for the job. The ink could be either blue. Or it could be like there's an I have an aqua. Well, I think I got a blue and a green. This green is is seems like it would match. So if it doesn't, um, well, I gotta shake it. Um, if it doesn't match, then I could always use the blue, if it doesn't help. i got to shake it, though, because um, the th what happens is that the pigment ends up at the bottom, and I want the pigment to be as... Um, saturated as it can be okay the problem is now that that I shook it it's got all these like bubbles in it and that means that when I put my ink my 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 crow quill in there it's gonna it's gonna get messy so I'm gonna use this really super fine well, I, I, I like it because it's so fine. But uh, watch, uh, I'm going to put put it in here and see how it, it, it it's like right at the ends. Like there's just ink all over the ends. And that's going to be it's gonna, my hands going to my fingers are just going to get full of ink now. So I got to decide what I'm going to work on first uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll work I'll begin with the eyes oh boy that that picked up a hair that's not good So I think that gr this green is working. I think this is this will work out. So the trick is here to just clear up the eye shape. Okay, definitely need hard edges near the mouth. This is to represent the um, what 
what's the word? Gosh, I forgot the name of the type of shadow. in this and harden this cast shadow there. now for the other eye go um, do I need it anywhere else maybe on the edges of the face right here and then um, Uh, I think I may need maybe here I think I may need to do this definitely on the um, the tubes because they don't look like tubes. Just refine these ideas a little bit more. This doesn't need it as much. This is some kind of plate. Uh, so I'm what I'm what I've I'm doing now is I'm adding a hard edge on one side and leaving the other side soft. So that implies that. that one side is the clear outline of the thing and the other side is is the transitional shadow going into the body of the thing at least that's the idea whether or not it comes across, uh, it's up to to the viewer, I guess. Okay, I think that's it. I'm gonna rinse off my. Well, no, I think I got one more line to do here. And that is 
right here like that that one that's the one okay and now I'm gonna come in and maybe darken in some areas that may need darkening now that I have a hard edge um, I can see some areas that I think might need to get a little darker again that, that are they're too bright um, areas like like right here the the the, the um, the valley doesn't go all the way to the edge. There we go. It absolutely needs to go all the way to the edge. And some of these things need to be softened. And some of these things need a little bit of dark. really subtle extra bits of shadow in there. Didn't mean to do that. Now I've got to erase this bit. It was meant to be subtle and it got really dark. So I'll come back in and darken this bit up a bit more. This is supposed to be hair. There's supposed to be hair here. Oh, there's a hair on my brush and that's a disaster. Or a little bit of fiber from the paper. Okay, and then this needs to be wet so that this is softer. It's just too hard an edge. There's a lot of really hard edges here. It needs to be softer. I think that's it. I guess I didn't need the brown after all. All that time I was thinking I needed it and I didn't. Definitely need to layer the blues in here though.
I like the way that it's the darkest right at the rim and then it just isn't quite as dark everywhere else. I kind of like that. It frames the fig the face. It's unintentional, it was accidental, and I like it. And I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna enhance it. And I think I'm done. And so that's that's the thing. That's my uh, so yeah, usually what it is is that I, I, I map out the, uh, the drawing as best as I can. The, the, the majority of the work is pretty much done before I even get started. Um, at the drawing stage. And then the entire trick of the thing is to not mess it up when I add the values, the uh, the color. It's just to get the right values down. And that's the that's the trick of it. That's the thing that that makes it or breaks it is whether or not I uh, I manage to uh, to preserve the line uh, the 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 drawing the demarcations the way that I that I I uh, I broke down the lights and the dark patterns. And if I could do that, it, it looks all right. Okay, so um, thank you for watching. Um, if you're interested um, in drawing at all and you don't even know where to start, um, I would encourage you to go look at the description of this video. There's a link to a course I made for people who can't draw themselves out of a paper bag they can't draw stick figure they can't draw a straight line but they're really interested in being able to learn to draw well what I do in that video in that course is I take you from um, basically knowing absolutely nothing to giving you the tools you need to actually start and then you can actually go to uh, drawing books that you see that usually what they are those these drawing books they're really advanced they kind of they're basically t telling people how to draw who already know how to draw and make marks and they don't really talk to people who are completely clueless as to making marks at all well once you're done with my course you're going to be able to um, understand what these people are talking about because you will be one of those people who know how to make the marks and then the rest is up to you but uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, uh, there's a link to the description of this video. Uh, all right, so that's the next postcard. One of my patrons is going to uh, get this, who's going to win it. I always give my postcards away to uh, my patrons who pray, uh, um, support me on Patreon. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you learned a little something, and I'll talk to you next time. All right, bye.